Hey everyone, I'm the Anime Watcher, and today I spend 32 hours researching on fan theory about Demon Slayer and Found, 42 theory that you may or may not have seen before. To not waste any of your time, let's get into the juicy theory. Theory number one. Did you know that some of Tanjiro's family might be still alive? When he found them, he said Nezuko's body was the only one who was still warm. But the real reason why her body was warm was because she had already turned into a demon. And some of Tanjiro's family might have survived and could have been saved, but his mind was too focused on the idea that whoever was the warmest might still be alive. But just imagine, what if Muzan had turned all of Tanjiro's family into demons? How would he carry them all into the battlefield? Theory number two. Tanjiro might be the one who is responsible for his family's death. Why? Because he was wearing his earrings all the time. Remember, Muzan did not have the ability to sense which human was from the sun-breathing bloodline, but he was able to hunt down the sun-breathing bloodline for centuries because of those earrings that they wore. And Tanjiro always wore his earrings to the village, and he was also the most popular kid in the village. So Muzan might have learned about Tanjiro's family from the villagers. Theory number three. When this man told Tanjiro not to climb up the mountain and go back to his home, he might have seen a demon devour his family before. That's why he knew about the Demon Slayer Corps. He also said that his family left him, but why was their umbrella still in the house? This means that a lot of people used to live there, but they died in a demon attack. Theory number four. What if that man had not held Tanjiro back for a night? Tanjiro might have been able to meet Muzan and unleash his Demon Slayer mark there. But even with his Demon Slayer mark activated, he might not have been able to defeat Muzan with his skills back then. Or maybe he could have because Tanjiro always comes up with a plan to fight no matter how strong the enemy is. Theory number five. The main reason why Giyu Tomioka saved Tanjiro and Nezuko and still looked after them since then was because he felt partly responsible for Tanjiro's tragedy caused by Muzan. If he had not been distracted and had arrived earlier to save them, Tanjiro's family might still be alive and Giyu Tomioka might also be dead because there was no way Giyu Tomioka could kill Muzan by himself. Theory number six. The Demon Slayer Corps might be a criminal organization. Don't get me wrong, I know the Demon Slayers save a lot of humans by killing all those demons. But was it really necessary to let all those kids die in the final selection? Why couldn't they make it safer and allow those kids who failed to go back home? Why was death the only option? And that might also be the reason why the government would never acknowledge the Demon Slayer Corps if they found out about all those kids who died in the final selection. Theory number seven. The reason why Tanjiro can talk to dead people like Sabado is because his family's spirits are in his spiritual core. Do you remember the six small flame spirits inside Tanjiro's spiritual core in the Mugen train arc? Have you ever wondered why there are six spirits instead of just one? It's because they are his family's spirits and they can talk to him and help him regain his consciousness when he is knocked out or trapped by a demon spell. And that's also the reason why he can see Sabado's spirit too. Theory number eight. Giyu Tomioka might have known about Tanjiro already before he met him, because of his fame in the village. Otherwise, how would he know that Tanjiro had a strong sense of smell? Tanjiro never told him about it the whole time they met, so it was a mystery how he knew about his special ability. Theory number nine. After he saved Tanjiro and told him to go find Mr. Urokudaki, he also left his crow behind to look after them and to let Mr. Urokudaki find Tanjiro by the sense of Giyu Tomioka's crow. We saw that crow flying above their heads in the beginning of episode 2. Theory number 10. This boulder was never meant to be broken. The stone Hashira placed this boulder there as a sign of remorse and respect for Kane Kocho's death, and he asked Mr. Urokodaki to look after it. He would never expect a random kid with a demon sister on his back to break his boulder, so Mr. Urokodaki might be in big trouble with the stone Hashira. Theory number 11. This theory suggests that Sabido is not Giyu Tomioka's friend who trained with him but he is Giyu Tomioka's son. If Sabido is Giyu Tomioka's son, that means he already had a wife who probably died by a demon as well. Theory number 12. The girl named Makomo who helped Tanjiro might have come from the flower-breathing bloodline, like Shinobu and Kanai Kocho, because Mr. Urokodaki always crafted a mask based on the appearance of his students, like the sun mark on Tanjiro's mask. So this girl might have had a flower demon slayer mark if she was still alive. Theory number 13. This theory proposes that Muzan might not be the one who killed Tanjiro's family, but there was another group of organization outside of the Demon Slayer Corps who did it. 
They wanted Tanjiro's family blood, and then they framed it on Muzan. Theory number 14. Did you know that Ms. Tamayo and the Demon Slayer Corps might have been working together for at least 100 to 200 years ago? But none of the new Hashiras knew about it. Only the royal bloodline who controlled the Demon Slayer Corps knew about Ms. Tamayo's existence. They worked with her to find a way to cure the curse on every male child in the royal bloodline who was born with Muzan's curse. Do you really think that for more than 200 years, no one ever found Ms. Tamayo? Theory number 15. There is a theory that Nezko cannot talk when she becomes a demon, but the truth is she actually can talk. As you can see, other demons can still talk normally even after they become demons. And the writer never confirmed that she cannot talk, she just doesn't want to. Besides, Tanjiro always plugs that bamboo stick in her mouth all the time, assuming that she doesn't talk. Yeah, she might have tried so hard to talk to him so many times. Poor Nezko. Theory number 16. This theory speculates that Muzan can not only turn humans into demons, but he can also turn animals into demons too. As we can see, Ms. Tamayo's cat is also a demon. If Muzan was smarter than this, he would turn some crows into demons and spy on the Demon Slayer Corps. And he would also know all the secret locations of the Demon Slayer members and Hashiras. But I think the Upper Moon Five might have learned about the Swordsmith Village from the crows too. How else would he know about the village? Because not a single person knows the whole path to go to that village, and only the crows know the location. Theory number 17. Tengen said Muichiro Tokido spent only two months in the Demon Slayer Corps to become a Hashira, and he was the last one to join this generation. So, there must have been one Hashira who either died or retired, otherwise there would be no free spot for him. And that missing Hashira could not be Kanai Kocho, because we all know Shinobu took her place, so I wonder which Hashira was replaced by Muichiro. Theory number 18. This theory suggests that Muzan came to kill Tanjiro's family not because they were the sun-breathing bloodline, but because Tanjiro's mom used to be a demon under Muzan's control. And later, Tanjiro's dad turned her back into a human because he knew the location of the blue spider lily. And that day Muzan came to threaten Tanjiro's mom to show him the location of the blue spider lily, but she didn't know so he angrily killed them all. Theory number 19. Nesco might not be the only demon who can walk under the sun. Tanjiro's whole family might have been able to walk under the sun after becoming demons. And no, it's not because they came from the sun-breathing bloodline, but it might be because Tanjiro's mom made a blue spider soup for them when they were young. Or Tanjiro's dad might have used blue spider lily to cure Tanjiro's mom before she even had children. Theory number 20. Did you know that these two demons that Muzan just sent to hunt down Tanjiro had never met before in their entire lives? But how did they work with each other so well? It's because they were skillful demons who had fought countless battles before. Muzan had a lot more of these kinds of demons, and he kept them to replace the lower moons. Theory number 21. Did you know that before the 12 Kazuki, the original idea was only 6 Kazuki? There is a theory that only the Upper Moon Demons are truly the high-level demons that Muzan intended to have. Muzan created the other six Lower Moon Demons just to make a food storage for himself. And this is not the first time he ate the Lower Moon Demons, he has been doing that for centuries. Muzan is older than he looks, and he is so lazy that he doesn't want to hunt down humans by himself. So, he came up with an idea to create another six fake Kazuki, and tell them to eat as many humans as possible so he can eat them later. Because eating one Lower Moon Demon is like eating a hundred to a thousand humans. And that's why he gets so angry when the Lower Moon Demons don't eat as many humans as he orders. Theory number 22. Did you know that the master of the mansion, Mr. Kagaya Ubuyashiki, was not poisoned? The purple scar on his face was a curse by Muzan himself because he and Muzan came from the same royal bloodline. And Muzan cursed every man who was born into his royal bloodline. So even though the scar on his face looked like the poison on Inosuke and Tengen, it could not be cured by Nezko's blood. And that's why there was a theory that the royal family created the Demon Slayer Corps not to save people from demons. As you can see, the way the system worked, they killed so many innocent children in the final selection, including Sabido. They didn't even care about those kids who died trying to become a Demon Slayer. So, the original reason why the royal family invested so much money and resources into the Demon Slayer Corps was because they wanted to collect all the best swordsmen across the country to kill Muzan and break their curse. 
And that was also why Muzan was hiding and created the 12 Kazuki, because back then he knew he was still weak and could not fight all the Hashiras at once by himself. Theory number 23. Did you notice that the demons in Demon Slayer and the cursed spirits in Jujutsu Kaisen are a bit similar? They are similar in the way they use their powers, like these three twin demons that Tanjiro fought at the beginning of the story. The reason why Tanjiro could enter that swamp was not because it was a real swamp. In theory, it was like a domain expansion in Jujutsu Kaisen. Even the Infinity Castle where Muzan met all the 12 Kazuki was also the domain expansion of this lady demon. If you notice any other demons that have domain expansions, please leave a comment down below. Theory number 24. The reason I said Ms. Tamayo and the Demon Slayer Corps were working with each other in secret before is because if you notice, the I symbol spell of Yushiro is the same spell on Master Kagaya Ubuyashiki's only son's head. Yushiro literally used his demon spell to hide and protect Master Kagaya Ubuyashiki's son from being hunted down by Muzan. Or maybe Yushiro was not the only one who knew how to use this spell. Theory number 25. There is a theory that Zenitsu never got a single mission after he passed the final selection, and when he fought this demon, it was not even his mission. He just followed Tanjiro there. Well, the reason why I say he didn't get any mission until he met Tanjiro was because he couldn't understand what his sparrow said, and he didn't even know that the crow could talk. So, after all this time, when he passed the final selection, he just ran around looking for a girlfriend. Theory number 26. Did you know that the animators tried to tell us about their personalities and mindsets through the way they shared food? First, they showed Tanjiro giving all his rice balls to Zenitsu, which meant he was a kind person who would put others first and a very helpful person. Zenitsu gave half of the rice back, showing he was a fair person who didn't want to take advantage of anyone. Inosuke, on the other hand, stole Tanjiro's food to mock him, which showed that he was a person who wanted to challenge people who he thought were strong. But he also accepted that he was weak if he lost the fight and got depressed. Theory number 27. Did you notice that every time Tanjiro got the blood of a higher level demon, Yushiro's cat always appeared right away? That means this cat was following Tanjiro everywhere he went. We just couldn't see him because of the spell. I'm sure the cat followed Tanjiro all the time, because Yushiro only had the power to make things invisible, but he didn't have the power to teleport things. Theory number 28. The reason why Inosuke seemed to not want to kill Nezuko anymore was not because he forgot or he didn't care, but the truth was, he could sense that Nezuko was not a threat by using his special awareness sense. So he pretended to not care about Nezuko and acted stupid. But he was not as stupid as he seemed. Theory number 29. If Inosuke had a chance to fight hand-to-hand -hand with Akaza, Akaza would praise and respect him. As we can see, he created all of these martial arts techniques by himself. Akaza was also a martial artist when he was still human. He always respected people with good hand-to-hand -hand skills like him, so he would love to make Inosuke his demon disciple. I think based on the level of intelligence that Inosuke had, he would have loved to become a demon if he had met Akaza before he joined the Demon Slayer Corps. Remember, Inosuke didn't know the concept of good or bad. He even tried to kill Tanjiro when they first met. In theory, Inosuke might have killed innocent people before, and he thought it was just a normal day in the wild. Theory number 30. Zenitsu's other personality is not asleep. He is always awake with Zenitsu because he knows everything Zenitsu does, and he also loves Nesko. He immediately knows what to fight and what to protect when he falls asleep. In theory, his sleeping personality is the one who controls the situation and he can make Zenitsu sleep whenever he wants because he always sleeps at the right time and in the right place. Theory number 31. The reason Zenitsu survived the lightning strike was because he used the thunder breathing technique to protect himself. And it gave him more power than normal people who used thunder breathing, as you can see. Water breathing performed well underwater. Sun breathing reached its highest potential when the person who used it was sick and their body was warm, and thunder breathing could only reach its highest limit if the user was hit by lightning. And every thunder breather would survive the lightning because this breathing style was created to fight in a heavy rainstorm. Theory number 32. Nesco's clothes get cut so many times in the series and they always come back to normal. There are only two things that could explain this. One, she can regenerate her clothes like Daki, the Upper Moon Six. Or two, it's just lazy animation, bro. Theory number 33. 
Speaking of clothes, in theory, the two smelliest people in the series are Nezko and Inusuke. We never see her wash or change her kimono once in the entire series, and Inosuke wears his boar head all the time and rarely washes it too. But I think he is used to the stinkiness since he lived with pigs. Theory number 34. A lot of people were amazed and also angry at this scene when season 1 came out. They were angry because they thought this scene was too beautiful to let it go to waste. Tanjiro should have been the one who killed Rui, the Lower Moon 5, and not Giyu Tomioka. But think about it. If Tanjiro had killed one of the 12 Kazuki, he would have become a Hashira if there was any free spot. And the series would not have been that good since Tanjiro had not shown enough character development yet. But on the other hand, some people thought it would have been very good because Tanjiro would have become the Hashira after Rengoku died. They wanted to see Rengoku encourage Tanjiro to take his place after he died. They also wanted to see the dynamic between Tanjiro and Muchiro Tokito in the Swordsmith Village. How would they feel, since they were both the youngest and the fastest to become Hashiras? Theory number 35. This mountain where Tanjiro fought with Rui might have been a village once, because if you look at the house that the demon family stayed in and where Rui saved his sister, they look identical. So, Rui was too obsessed with the idea of creating a happy family in his house. He didn't even try to leave. Theory number 36. When Shinobu brought the three of them to train in the Butterfly Mansion, we could see four certificates on the wall. But why four? This theory claims that these four certificates belonged to Shinobu, Kanai Kocho, Kanao, and Aoi. They received these certificates from Shinobu's parents after finishing the flower breathing training and becoming demon slayers. And that's why these three didn't get the certificates, because they were just training how to control their breathing better. All of them were learning to become flower-breathing demon slayers, but Shinobu created another new breathing style by herself, because she was too weak to hold a normal sword. Theory number 37. When Kanao trained Tanjiro, we can see in this scene that she was shocked when Tanjiro was about to touch her hand. Because she lived with all females around her since she was young, she had never been touched by a boy before. We can also see that she was even more shocked when Tanjiro grabbed her hand in this scene. Theory number 38. Kanao and Shinobu didn't have a close relationship, as you might think, even though they lived in the same mansion. Kanao preferred Kanai Kocho better because she was kind and cheerful. She always solved the problems calmly. On the other hand, even though Shinobu smiled a lot, that was just a fake smile that she created because her dead sister asked her to. In reality, she was mad as hell and liked to mock people in their face, especially Giyu Tomioka. Kanao didn't like Shinobu when she asked her obvious questions to her face, so she often walked away from her. But she still decided what Shinobu asked her by flipping her coin. Theory number 39. The reason behind the swordsmith's funny masks is not just a random design. All the swordsmiths hold a lot of secrets about the Demon Slayer core and the knowledge about crafting all those unique weapons for the Demon Slayers. So, the small mouth represents that they will keep their mouth shut and talk as little as possible. The big eye shows that they are very hardworking and focused people, and they also have families outside the village too. They will take off the mask and go visit their families once in a while, and if you notice, only Tanjiro Swordsmith doesn't have the red dot on his mask. What is that about? Theory number 40. This theory claims that Tanjiro has a crush on all the main female characters in the series because he blushes. Tanjiro is an honest person, so he cannot hide when he is shy. His first crush was Ms. Tamayo, then Shinobu, and lastly, Mitsuri. The only girl that Tanjiro didn't have a crush on yet was Kanao, because that was true love. Some people think he even had a crush on Muchiro Tokito, but please tell me that's not real. Theory number 41. Tengen might have slapped Oi as a test to see how she would react and how Tanjiro and his friends would react. Tengen is not a fool, and he knows that Oi is not a suitable spy for his mission. He also knows that Tanjiro and his friends are not happy with his plan, and that they will try to stop him. Therefore, he might have slapped Oi to provoke them, and to see how far they are willing to go to protect her. But the truth is, it was a marketing strategy. To make Tengen a badass character, they had to make the viewers hate him at first and prove them wrong later. So, the viewers would love the character more than ever. It shows a journey of up and down feelings. And that's also why Demon Slayer is such a successful anime among all the good ones. Because they show enough character development and make people have mixed feelings with their characters. 
like they did with Zenitsu, for example. The story is not about Tanjiro himself, it's about the journey of Tanjiro, meeting very cool and unique people along the way, from low level to the highest level of tension as possible. We all know that at the end of the story, they are going to kill Muzan, but we still enjoy the journey because every character is very badass. Theory number 42. Real talk, Muzan didn't like Daki that much in reality. The reason why he was so nice to Daki compared to other demons was because he wanted to please Gyutaro. Gyutaro didn't want to become a demon or a 12 Kazuki at all. He just wanted his sister to be okay and get what she wanted. So Muzan knew the only way to make Gyutaro listen to him was to please his sister. Gyutaro was actually stronger than the Upper Moon 4 and Upper Moon 5 themselves if they fought one-on-one -on -one without using Blood Demon Arts. In theory, he could take on Akaza in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with no problem. But the only downside was his sister. His sister was actually bringing him down. He let his sister eat all the rare blood people and strong Hashiras, and he only ate what was left over from his sister. He even agreed to hide all the time and let his sister live the life she wanted. And he only came out to fight, 